Hello everyone. So hopefully the animated tiles are treating you well. And today we are going to play with some particle effects. And we're going to create a life particle that when we destroy a pot, then the life will fall out of the pot and you can pick it up. So let's get started on that. This was pretty new to me setting this up and it's actually pretty cool so let's create a new animation this time we want it to be a particle animation and there's all sorts of different things you can do you can get a rain and you can preview them if you click the the play right down here you can actually preview them so here's rain here's what let's do a blood splatter let's do a recovery these are all the, the built-in particles that they have. They've got steam. Let's see what steam is. Oh, I can't see that very well. And there's other stuff too, like a bonfire for your campfires. And some really cool stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna use the candle one and we're gonna name it life animation and we're gonna just use the candle template and let's go here so right off the bat we can hit preview and that's how we can see what our projectile or our animation looks like our particle effect I mean and you can zoom in the screen here and get a closer look and you got a bunch of options over here on the right and just has to do with the speeds you're hopefully you're somewhat knowing of how particles work there was a couple particle plugins on RPG Maker MV and there's some variation so you can add some randomness to it and I'm not going to go into all the details here but one thing we are going to do is we are going to change the color because we want it to be a red heart so we're going to get it all red and then down here we're also going to click off addition mode and then just to show you what that's like in the preview addition just adds the blend an additive blend so now we just want the real colors and so now we want we're going to grab this heart shape on the on the particle template images yeah, so we're going to grab the heart shape and then we're not going to add any detection to the animation itself, to the particle effect. So this is really it for setting it up. Let's just preview it and see if that's what it looks like. That looks pretty good. It looks a little fast. So maybe we will adjust the speed. I'll give it a 0.5 with the variations fine. I like the randomness. Let's test that out. It's a little slower, not much. Maybe the speed is not the one that, or maybe we need to do another one to get the speed exactly the, a little slower, but that's gonna be fine for this. So, and, and that's it for setting up the particle effect. And actually I should probably rename this. Let's see, change name, and I want it to be particle. Yeah, I keep calling it animation, but we're it's a, actually a particle. So now, the one thing we do need, at least how I did it, was I created a new animation, and I set it with no image. You can't set it with, I don't know what animation only means, but I just set it with no image and a 16 by 16 uh, dots per frame so I clicked OK and I'm gonna just name this uh, life and I'm gonna hit OK so now we have this life motion I'm just gonna name this blank because it's 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 just blank there's nothing there only one direction and it's just a blank frame uh, we will s here we will floor it like this uh, what we are going to do is on the motion, 
we're going to add an attack detection because this is how we're going to detect when the player steps on it. So we're going to add a keyframe. And then up in here is where the attack detection is. And I want to try to make it where you have to step on the particle. So I'm going to make it a little bit like this. And we'll just see how that looks and goes from there. All right, so that empty animation is set up. We got our particle set up. So now let's go to objects and we're gonna be dealing with our pot. So I'm gonna drag it down here just so I know what I'm dealing with. And we also need another object that we'll add here real quick. And we're gonna name this just a life object. We're going to set it to be the life animation. We want it in the player group, but we don't want enemies to detect it. We want it to detect the player. So we want, yeah, since it's using an attack detection to sense what's on it, we don't want enemies to grab it. We want the player group to grab it. And then we'll just leave this as is, and we will hit OK. And it is changing my color. I'm just going to start using this from now on so I don't have to keep typing in. I wish they'd make the gray a, a default one. And we're going to call this life active. Basically, the life is on the scene, and you can grab it. We're going to set it to the blank, and we're going to set it to the only. And that's all we're going to do for now. We're going to... I, I, actually, I guess let's copy, and let's paste. And so this will be the action for when you pick it up. And so this is going to be the destroy. And we'll make that red. We'll add a link to it. And the link is going to be if you make contact with a collision of the, another object. Set all directions. And that object is going to only be the player. So the players, since the life, that blank animation has an attack detection, when the player's collision enters that attack detection, it will now trigger this event to take place. I know I keep explaining that over and over, but it's just one of those things. And then on destroy, we're going to say destroy object. So now the life is going to be destroyed when we make contact. So now we got to do a little bit of changing to our pot because now instead of destroying, we need it to do something else. So we need it to not destroy the pot anymore. We need to change the pot into the life object, not the animation, the object. We don't want to inherit anything and we want to use the center using a connection point, which we will set here in a second, it will be the connection point. Okay, so this part might have been a little confusing. So let's go set the connection point and hopefully it'll make more sense. So now instead of destroy, we're gonna name change to life. And we're gonna set it like this. And it is missing something. We do need a image right here for the connection point. So let's go to animations. Let's go to our pot. And let's go to our pot break. And what we're going to do to set up this connection point is we are going to copy and paste the only. And we're going to say that this is the direction when broken. I'll just say. And in this direction, we only want the last frame. So we want to delete those frames. And we'll just do this to one frame. And it's not looping, so we don't have to worry about that. The one thing we do have to worry about now is setting up a connection point. So this is, this is going to be the, mo the direction 
when we change the object to life. So let's just set it real quick, pop break, and we're gonna use the when broken direction. And if you remember, we said set to use the connection point of this animation. So now we need to go back to the animation, go back to the pop break when broken, and we need to set the connection. So let's click add a keyframe on the connection point, and we're gonna drag this connection point down to about right there. That's about where the pot was. Oops. Yeah, that's about where the pot is. So that will look good when it, when it uh, spawns there. Or not spawn, it's actually morphing. Matter of fact, if you've used Yanfly's morph event plugin, this is essentially what we're doing. We are morphing that event into another event. And then when you pick up that other event, it will destroy and then that object will be gone off the scene. All right, so we have our pot. Now, when, we, when the HP is zero, it breaks. When the animation of the pot break is done, because that's what this trigger is, condition, it then is going to change the object to the life and it's going to spawn that image on the when broken connection point. So now you have a life laying there on the ground. It's blank because we don't need an animation for it, we're gonna use a particle effect. So let's add that particle effect. Let's click on runtime action and let's show a particle. And we want the life particle to show and we want to use it on the center of this object. And we want no time limit. Otherwise it will disappear in this one second. Uh, yeah, one second mark. We'll click okay on that. And now we've already set it up if contact with collision detection. And then we've already set up the destroy. Okay. So now let's go and see if this all worked. Let's click play. And our first moment of truth. Yep, it broke. You can walk around it. And then when you go over it, it goes away. There's another heart. Another heart, another heart. You can pick them all up. And they kind of even have a little fade out effect. So, yeah, that's that's it. You can add sounds. You can eventually, when I learn how to do HUDs and stuff, can make them interact with the HUD. And I don't even know if this is the, the best way to do it. I just was playing around with particles and figured at least we could introduce particles. So there we go. All right.